Hey there, YouTube. Today, like many others, I'd like to express our growing fondness and fondness over the many of years of the Pokemon series. Now, I'd like to talk to you today about my top 10 favorite Pokemon. Pokemon has done a lot of different avenues over the years. They've done games, they've done training card games, they've done anime, they've done comics. Unfortunately, they don't do some of the great spin-offs like the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise does. But I'd like to go today into the top 10 favorite Pokemon of mine, personally. Now, this is going to be a very my opinion based list, and it's not just going to be on the game. I see a lot of lists and videos that are basically just top 10 favorite Pokemon from the games. I'm not doing that. I'm doing my top 10 favorite Pokemon from every avenue that Pokemon has ever reached. So with this, I give you Diz's top 10 favorite Pokemon. Starting off this list at number 10 is Esper. Now, Esper made its debut in Pokemon X and Y, and I caught it pretty much right off the bat. I evolved it later on from that point, and I felt that Esper was cutting it in ways that Meowstic just wasn't. I don't know if it was the appearance or the moveset or what it was about Esper, but I always found myself going back and catching another Esper. Now, also in the anime, the Esper episode I highly suggest you check out because it is one of the most depressing episodes, whether it's in the movies, or when Ash leaves Pikachu, or Pikachu leaves Ash, or Charmander gets left in the rain, or Bulbasaur gets sent down that sewer on that little wooden raft, which I still to this day cannot watch that episode specifically. Esper's episode also made a very large emotional impact, and I find myself, whether out of sympathy or just because I love emotion from this type of thing so much, I always go back to my ex game and re-catch an Esper and just give it the love it needed from the episode. Coming in at number 9 is going to be the Pokemon Reuniclus. Now, I must ask this question, have you ever gone back and replayed a game like I do every single time I play the game and try and catch a different set of 6 Pokemon that you main? Well, this is one of those Pokemon that ended up becoming that Pokemon. Starts out as Solosis, and as much as we love those hard, heavy-hitting, special attack psychic Pokemon, the cute and cleverness nature that is Reuniclus is something that many times gets overlooked at first, but yet, as you play the game and develop it more, it becomes one of the favorite and most used Pokemon in the party. Coming in at number 8 is Mighty Anna. With the announcement of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, it also announced an early Dark-type Pokemon in Poochyanna. So I feel like this is one of the best early route evolution series that you can get in all of Pokemon. It's a different type than you normally see with the normal and flying. It's got a different moveset, it's got pretty average stats, but the aesthetic appeal is what really wins me over. It's got great aesthetics and it always feels good to have that Mighty Anna backing you up because you always know that it's going to be a reliable Pokemon in not necessarily the competitive sense, but for the casual gamer like me, always a great member to have on your team. Much like Mighty Anna, Absol is another Pokemon introduced of the Dark type in the third generation, but it's basic. It's got better stats with speed and crit and moves to enhance that speed and crit up the wazoo. It's got a great aesthetic with the blade feel and just looks like a very vicious beast. And it's got some lore aspects. If you look at the Pokedex entries, it mentions that it senses warning and danger, which is great for lore aspects for people that are catching their Pokemon based on more than just their moveset and ability to get you through the game. It's got that great lore without being a legendary Pokemon, it's got great speed and crit which will help you in so many different situations, and overall it's just an amazing Pokemon to have in any party. I'll keep number 6 simple. Didane is one of those Pokemon that after watching the anime, you instantly fall in love with it. I never thought that I'd find something as great to replace the flagship Pikachu role model of the series as this Pokemon does. It doesn't take long to the anime that you get addicted to its shenanigans, you get attracted to it instantly with its adorableness, and although it has a weak moveset in the game, Pokemon Yellow, you can't evolve Pikachu, so why not carry a Dodane on your team? Slicing its way into number 5 is Bisharp, one of those Pokemon that combines two of my favorite types with Steel and Dark and utilizes both of those types within its moveset fantastically. I never felt like Bisharp was a bad option in terms of putting it out in the field of play, and it's just one of those Pokemon that every time I go through the trading card game and I make a Dark type deck or a Steel type deck, Bisharp is headlined within that deck. It doesn't matter if it's got the greatest moves, this is one of those Pokemon that I just brain along because of how it looks, how it plays, the moves that it has, and it's just overall incredible to have something like that aesthetically within your team. Speaking of Blades, Scyther is one of those Pokemon that I coveted from the very beginning in the first generation. It's one of those Pokemon that is incredibly hard to catch, is very hard to go out of your way for, it's not necessarily the best in terms of types, but for it being a bug type Pokemon and for the game never really giving those bug types some love, 
Scythor is one of those Pokemon that for its attack, speed, crit, and moveset alone, you can always utilize it in some way, shape, or form in your team. It's one of those Pokemon that, if you're a fan of the earlier generations, you have to bring with. I'm not going with its evolved form of Scissor, because I just thought that they needed something to bring into the Steel-type world. I feel like Scyther is one of those Pokemon that is always something that you can fall back on, it's great aesthetically. For those people that are in love with the nostalgic factors of the early games and what really got you into it, Scyther was definitely one of those Pokemon based on its difficulty to catch, great moveset, great ability for the generation, and just overall aesthetic appeal. And number three is one of the best, if not the best, late game dragon type Pokemon that you can get. Generation 1 had Dratini and Dragonair and Dragonite, which personally in my opinion fell way short of what it should have, what it could be, and its overall hype in general. But Salamence delivered on all of that. Sure it sucks to level it up from a Bagon, and you've got to go through all of that process, and it takes a long time to level, it's a slow leveler to begin with, it levels up to Salamence at 55, and it's just overall a very difficult Pokemon to get to Salamence. But once you get it there, you will not be disappointed. Looks incredible. Great moveset. Looks more of a fire-breathing Dragon-type than Dragonite did, which always kind of upset me about Dragonite. Never had that really good, vicious, fire-breathing Dragon feel, which Salamence totally delivered on. Had a great stat, abilities, everything about it is just fantastic. And if you're looking for a late game Dragon Pokemon, look no farther than Salamence. If you've played the first generation of Pokemon video games, you remember getting a Lapras. You remember being level 20, not really having the right moves that you needed. Probably already had a Blastoise or a better Pokemon with Surf anyway, maybe a Gyarados for example. And you remember putting that Lapras in your PC box. And that's where you're wrong. Lapras has some of the most diverse moves for a water type Pokemon. It can learn moves like Thunder, which is awesome. It's a beasty tank in terms of HP stats as well as basically every other stat, except attack, but it doesn't need it, and in all reality, Lapras is actually a Pokemon that you surf on in the games, in the anime most of the time, and just in general is one of the most diversely used Pokemon that never really gets the attention it deserves. I beat the Elite Four basically entirely on Lapras's back, no pun intended, and it's just one of those Pokemon that no matter what generation I'm in, I will find a way to get Lapras, and I will make that my main water type Pokemon. Coming in at number one is my all-time favorite Pokemon is Ampharos. I remember my first silver playthrough at Kodame Reap and was so excited that Pikachu was not going to be my flagship electric type Pokemon. So I leveled it up and was blown away by how great May Reap, Flaffy, and Ampharos fared on my team. It's got great moves. It's a tank in terms of electric type Pokemon. Sure, it's a little bit slow, but it more than made up for it in terms of abilities and just how it helped me get through the game in general. Plus, it felt fantastic to see how Jasmine had such a beasty Ampharos, and even just helping it in the lighthouse and giving it the medicine felt great knowing that I had such an in-depth, lore-based Pokemon within the game. And there you guys have it, my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time. Did any of yours fall on this list? If not, feel free to leave a comment with the ones that I missed, and maybe I'll be able to do a top 10 fan favorite Pokemon based on the comments below. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a dislike if you disliked the video, this is my first Pokemon Top 10, so there's definitely going to be some changes as to how it's formatted, and we'll see how this one works out, and how you guys really receive this one, and we're going to be going forward from this in the future. So what Top 10 of Pokemon do you want to see me do? I hope that this was enjoyable for you, and I hope that some of your Pokemon were on this list, and I hope to see your comments in terms of what I missed in terms of Pokemon, the ones that I chose, what I didn't miss about them, and I can't wait just to hear your overall feedback about this video. So as always, thank you so much for spending the time with me today. I hope that I was able to make your time worthwhile. If not, I apologize. May you have the greatest rest of your day, and I hope to see you on the next Top 10.